All right. Uh, okay, we got all set up to test here. And um, first things we're gonna do are, uh, we're gonna do the stuff that the scope is good at. So we're gonna test, uh, see what's making power. Get an eight ohm load here. We're gonna have a look at the square wave, which gives us a general idea of whether the amp is behaving properly, if it has a decent frequency response, if it's ringing or anything like that. It might be because this is a no feedback. We're on the output transformer, but we'll see. Um, we're gonna check the gain and we're going to have a look at what the output impedance is on both the 8 ohm and the 4 ohm taps. So let's let's go. Okay, so you can see the amp is on now. I've let it sort of warm up so it's not just straight from cold so everything's nice and warm. And uh, I've just put the, we've got 0.5 volt peak to peak going in here and we've got 2.24 out here so we're just going to adjust until we get 1 watt. Now I have not checked, I didn't really try and match these tubes up and I haven't uh, I haven't like tried to swap through better or worse driver tubes or anything like that and so, so this is sort of a raw, sort of what we get is what we get here. Um, but it says we're two point here but we're going to trust this for sort of stuff like that so let's go on up to exactly 2.8 on the meter. Let's pretty close that's that's as close as we're going to get oh well right on right on the nose all right so we're getting a watt here um, so that's a good place to start so why don't we go ahead and start with the square wave and then after that we'll see if it's making power and we'll look at the gain so let's flip straight over to the square wave here and holy geez that is a great as a beautiful square wave I've outdone myself. Good job, Doug. All right, what do we got here? So, <clears throat> fairly happy with that. That is, uh, that's a good operating amp. <laughs> Doesn't get much more square than that, too. You can already you can tell from the look of this square wave that uh, that you know we haven't got any ringing problems. <clears throat> Our frequency response is quite good. Um, our low frequency is quite good, and um, yeah, really quite happy with that. All right, so let's go back and see if we're making power. All right, so let's click this down a couple of clicks and see what we end up with here. Here we go. Hopefully, oh, a little optimistic there. Let's see starts to get out of shape like so the clipping characteristic is kind of wonky on this honestly that's not so good it's not I'm gonna just call it right onset of clipping is like gotta be like right there so we're looking at 7.8 volts into 8 8 ohms so we're not making quite 8 watts so not quite an 8 watt amplifier and the clipping character does get a little bit wonky there when you get too high. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. It might be mismatched output tubes. But now let's have a look at our gain. We'll just go down, we'll go back down to uh, some round number. Let's go down to four. We just overshot it already. Or actually, yeah, we'll do four. Let's just do it. Let's do 11 peak. Let's do 11 uh, peak to peak. All right. So it's 11 ish peak to peak, and we're putting in 0.89 peak to peak. All right. So it's just going to be 11 divided by 0.89. Good. And we end up with a gain of a little over 12. It was not bad. A little over 12. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the output impedance. And we're going to be using uh, this little guy. I forgot I got my autofocus turned off, so let's put it over here, I guess. Anyway, we're going to be using this little output impedance checker. Let me just plug that in. All right, we got our output impedance checker plugged in here. And what we'll do is uh, it's right now it's set at uh, an arbitrarily large impedance, which in this case is 1K, but it doesn't really matter as long as it's sufficiently large compared to the output impedance of the device. And so we're going to set this at exactly 2. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over to the pot, the precision pot here. And then we're going to try and go straight down to exactly one. If we can hit one on the nose, then we'll remove this device and measure it to see what our output impedance is. So that, that is as close as, that's just about, it's kind of fiddly. I think, I think that's as close as we're going to get. All right, let's take it out and check it. All right, let's see what we got on the 8 ohm tap here for output impedance. It is 4.17 ohms. I'll write that down. All right, now we're going to measure the output impedance of the 4 ohm tap. Let's see where we're at here. We want to get up to 2. Let's go on up to 2. Very close. Two, two up. That's close as we're gonna get. Now we're gonna switch it, switch the pot in. We're gonna bring it down to one. That that's it right there. All right, let's remove it and measure it. All right, so the forum tap. Output impedance will be 2.35 ohms. Nice and low. Okay, so that's everything that we needed to do with our scope. Um, we're going to swap it out for the computer and get some really detailed noise and distortion and frequency response, response measurements. All right, so here we go. Uh, you can see I've got signal gen going. We're giving it uh, a little signal here and we're getting a watt out, just about a watt, 2.8-ish or something. And um, you can see we've got our fundamental tone here and um, down here is 60, right? Why do we have 60 exact? I can't remember. So that is, uh, yep, that's 60 down there. And so 60 has got to be, that's the heaters and the bias supply, right? Because the, uh, the, the high voltage is full wave. So full wave is 120. So it looks like we've got very little contribution from the high voltage here. We perhaps some from the bias supply, but probably most of that is the AC heaters. I see we're getting a little bit of, maybe one of my wires is loose, something like that. Seems like the noise floor is sort of shifting around a little bit. So I don't know what the deal is with that. It might be my air conditioner kicking on. But um, you can see that at one watt, our distortion is really, really nice, uh, at 1K at least. We're getting a distortion of 0.13%. And our signal to noise, our noise is down here at about a negative 130. I'm sorry, negative 30, and we're up here at 80. Right, so that's, uh, you know, it's 110 of signal to noise versus one watt, right? I did my math right there. Yeah, so about 110 of signal to noise. Now, the, um, the, the 60 is creeping up here uh, to about negative 10, and so we're talking about a signal to, signal to hum of uh, 90 at one watt. Both of those are very good numbers. I'm just going to write those down. All right, so now let's look at distortion up at 5 watts. So 5 watts is like 6.3. That's pretty close, 6.31 or so. Um, so our distortion has climbed to 0.7. Nice. All right, so now we're going to start on our sweeps. Our first sweep will be at 1 watt. We're going to sweep from 20 hertz all the way up to 40k. And um, yeah, let's see, let's see how we do. Nice. All right, so here is our frequency response. You can see this is 678, a 2 decibel window here. 
Let's zoom in a little bit now. We've got a one decibel sort of window here, and we can see that 20K is down from 1K. So we have a little bit of high frequency roll off here. So we're down about, let's see, we're at 67.3 here. And so we go up to 20K, we're at 66.6. .6. And so we're off less than a dB at 20K versus 1 versus 1K. Please stop that. My meter likes to beef at me. All right, and so, like I said, 1K, we're at 67 point, it looks like 67.4-ish or something like that. So down here at 20, we're down to 67.2-ish. And so we're off 0.2 of a dB at 20 hertz. I mean, that's phenomenal for a no-loop feedback uh, tube amp, you know, to be perfectly honest. It's quite nice. We'll see how that how that changes with power level, because we're going to do all the sweeps. We're going to sweep all the way up to clipping at 1 dB increments. But this is where we're starting. So let's look at our distortion. How's our distortion looking here? Uh, looks, looks good. See our 60 hertz creeping up down there. And um, our distortion, let me look at this. This is actually pretty interesting. So our distortion doesn't really have that, that characteristic low frequency transformer saturation rise at one watt. I'm sure it's gonna kick in. You know, we'll get some saturation uh, distortion as we, as we uh, raise the power. But here at one watt, the distortion is basically exactly identical all the way through the spectrum here. And here, once again, I explained this in the last, uh, last video, I probably have some unmatched, I have some mismatched tubes here, you know, because I didn't bother to spend time matching them, uh, which I probably should do, uh, because our third, actually, no, wait, look, I'm saying this wrong, look, our second is lower than our third here, and so we probably do have fairly well-matched output tubes here, because we're getting our second canceled, right? So our second is lower than our third this time, so I said that exactly wrong. Uh, our tubes here are probably quite well matched, and so that's great. And we're getting a similar thing here at one watt. We're getting a point one three. What did we say earlier? A point one three. Yeah. So we're right on the money there with our distortion. And look, it stays low. It doesn't even creep above point two throughout the high entire operating range. And look up here at high frequency. Look at that. It even gets lower. So these, I got these output transformers on AliExpress. They weren't expensive, they were kind of cheapies. But uh, at one watt, boy, they are good performers. Really nice, ha very happy. And most of your listening happens here at one watt. So that's, that's awesome. So now I'm gonna do the, uh, the time-lapse thing where I sweep all the way up at one decimal increments, all the way up to past clipping, and then we can get a better idea of the sort of total distortion characteristic of this amplifier. All right, so we've gotten through all these sweeps and things are looking really good. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that the reason that the noise floor measurement of these sweeps does not look the same as the noise floor measurement that we got with our FFT is because when I go to do these sweeps, I turn the input sensitivity way down and I add a voltage divider there so I don't overdrive the input here and so that makes the, uh, the noise measurement suffer. You know, so it's not as good in this configuration. So the previous noise measurement is more indicative of the actual amplifier, whereas this is just allows us to have the headroom to do the measurement for the distortion here. In fact, I'm just going to turn this noise floor measurement off for now so we can just look purely at the distortion. And let's zoom out a little bit here so we can really see what's going on. All right, so you can see at 1 watt and at 1K, uh, things are just looking pristine. This thing has got such a beautiful one watt distortion. If you look, the only distortion that's even on the chart is third and second. And everything else is just way, way down. I mean, we're talking about how many dB down these are. There's, they're, they're negative 26 dB versus, uh, the fundamental is at 67. And so it's just, they're just so far down. The noise of your room is going to be 40 dB or something like that. So they're just, they're just, this is a very tube-like response. And you'll see that the distortion 
is completely uniform from 20 hertz all the way up to the, the point that we can measure here. And so it's, this is a beautiful response. Really excellent one watt measurement. And that's probably why this amp is gonna sound so good is because most of you are listening in a medium sized room with moderately efficient speakers is gonna be around one watt. And so this is uh, exceeding my expectations for its one watt performance. Really nice, great low frequency response. Check that out, amazing. All right, let's go up in power. As we're going up in power, our distortion is increasing or at one point. 9 THT now, up at 1.6 watts, we're going to be at uh, 0.2, 2 watts, we're at 0.29. I'll be exporting these and displaying them on the screen for you guys so you haven't got to look at my piddly, you know, re screen recorded with my camera or whatever. Uh, let's see, we keep going up, let's go on up to 5, 5.12 watts. And here we are starting to get distortion creeping in. You can see this here. So somewhere between four and five watts, let's see, is where the distortion starts to kick in. So we're still under a, under a percent of distortion, but you can see that now the, uh, the fifth harmonic is uh, a little bit higher than the, uh, the second and the third. So that's not that good. Um, but still, total distortion is quite low. And we're gonna get up here to 6.6. .6. This is about where we said the amplifier, this is before clipping, but about where we rated the amplifier. Uh, we rated it at uh, 7.8 volts. So the next reading is gonna be, our uh, second point eight, sorry, 7.8 volts, which is 7.6 watts. And we're gonna be up here eight watts momentarily. So eight watts should be into clipping. But you can see that the distortion is still not doing that low frequency rise thing, these output transformers uh, are uh, really working well. But we're still over at 1.4% now, total harmonic distortion across the board. Except for it actually gets lower up here. Up at high frequencies, we're still at 0.4. Pretty impressive. All right, eight watts. Now things are out of hand. All the higher orders are coming up. This is that funky clipping behavior that we noticed when we were looking at, this, at the, uh, the waveform. Um, and, and so you see it here now we're eight watts and so this is where I said the circuit was rated for this is what the power it should be making is eight watts but really we're still only at 1.6 percent distortion which is not high um, but the distortion is not great it could be better behaved up here at eight watts and at nine watts it should be completely insane yeah it's you know it's not quite three percent yet up here at nine watts but um, it's looking pretty pretty funky right and all the way up here this is crazy into clipping at 9.68 watts and we're at almost 5% distortion so not so good but I love that one watt performance now let's see how we did here so here are all our sweeps let's, let's zoom out a little bit so we can see what's going on here oh check this out so this is interesting so up here now remember the top ones are beyond where we decided that the amp was rated at but look, it starts to get compression here. What is this? If we select, so this is going to be this is going to be nine point six, nine, eight, eight watts. And what is this? This is uh, six point six. So this is the last one that we decided was unclipped right here. And as you can see, that one is well behaved, right? But as we get above that. Look, power compression, I haven't seen this in an amplifier before, the power compression kicks in in the upper mid to high frequencies before it kicks in at low frequencies. Now, that's actually probably okay because most of the energy in your music is at low frequency. And so if you're going to clip anywhere, you're going to clip low frequency first. And it seems like it behaves pretty well clipping low frequency as far as power compression goes, right? But these mid and high frequencies, this might be like a snare drum, drum smack or something like that. Um, looks like power comp compression kicks in a little bit early up there. So I don't know what that's about exactly. It's probably a transformer thing. So maybe that's the trade-off for having fantastic low frequency response characteristic is to have this sort of thing up here. I don't, I don't know what's going on there exactly. But that's interesting. Um, but you can see the amplifier performs extremely well up to about 7 watts. Um, and then after that, um, it gives up, gives up a little bit. So I would say, in retrospect, I should probably say this is a, a seven, seven and a half watt amplifier 
um, would be the, the rating that I would give it, right? And if you operate it within that realm, uh, it looks really good. Good amplifier. All right. So, um, at this point, this is the point in the video where I open the bottom of the amplifier and show you what it looks like on the inside. I'm pretty proud of this one. It's very tidy. All right, so let's have a look at the inside of this. Here's my, my wonderful bottom plate there. It is uh, attached, so it's shielded there. You can see it's attached to the ground. And, oh man. So I really took my time with this one and just sort of got everything sort of straightened out and everything like that. Um, there's all the driver circuitry, right? And so these guys right here with the sort of large resistor, those are the plate loads and coupling caps for the 6H8C. And then the inside here, those smaller coupling caps and these resistors right here, those are the, uh, the plate loads for the 6 and one p right there. And you can see the current sources, I've hid them fairly cleverly in my opinion. Down there, I cut out little bits on the uh, turret board and sort of mounted them on tag board down there. And so those are little LM334s, right? And then back here, you can see here are power tube, power tube sockets back here. And there are our current sensor resistors and our, our bypass capacitors just neatly tucked away in there. Our grid stopper is right there, connecting the grids there. And here's our bias uh, supply and controls right there. You can see our, just like I draw, drew out for you earlier, there's the uh, there's a diode and the cap, resistor, cap, and then we've got our resistors and our, our, our adjustment pots, right? So the power supply, I didn't do this on the PCB, obviously. I just was like, you know what? I only need one of these things. Um, I'll just build it. So I built it right there on tag board. Here's my DC heater supply that runs all the, uh, the voltage gain heaters. Um, put that in all my amps. I haven't had one go bad yet. They work great, very quiet. So that has a uh, rectifier, a big filter. It's got a switching reg to drop most of the voltage down from 12 or 15 or whatever. Um, then it's got a linear reg to clean up the switching reg. And it's very quiet. All the noise that it produces, which is not very much, is up above the audible range. That's my transformer for my bias supply. See my output transformers are connected there. And that's basically that. That's how it came out. Hope you enjoyed the video, and um, we'll do another one soon.